I am a writer. I write about life, my life. Sometimes it's more difficult to write true things than it is to write a novel because you relive all those things in your life that you're writing about. Sometimes you wake up with nightmares, reliving things that you never wanted to live in the first place. Other times you have sweet memories that bring you happiness. Life throws us a lot of things that we don't think we can handle. But when you write about it, they resurface and you live them over and over again. It's hard to be a writer. Sandra, thank you so much for coming back uh, to see me today. And in this video, I'm going to talk about something that I touched on a little bit in my book, but it's very personal and I really have not talked about it with anyone. I had a cousin when I was growing up that lived next door. She was about 10 years older than I was. And when I was seven or eight, she went to New York because she really wanted to be a model and she moved into the Barbizon Hotel. And immediately she became a Conover model and then eventually one of the very first Ford models. She became very famous uh, every time a magazine would come out with pictures of her in it. My aunt and my mother would run to the nearest confectionery store to pick up her magazines and the pictures of her. She was my idol. She had gone to New York and lived her dream all by herself. Well, when I was a teenager and when I was ready to start out on my own, my cousin Carolyn was my mentor. When I moved into New York and lived at the Barbizon, she came to see me. I spent Thanksgiving with her family when she was in the hospital having her youngest child. And that's what I want to talk about today. My cousin Carolyn had a very unusual journey in life. She started out as a famous model. She met at the Barbizon, a girl that she became very close to and she helped her to get a couple of modeling jobs, but actually this person wanted to be an actress. And the name of this person was Grace Kelly. She and Grace became very good friends and continued that friendship for a lifetime. It was a fairy tale existence and I always look forward to her coming home and visiting us because we just lived next door the only personal picture that I have remaining is the picture of her while she was carrying her third child, Nina, and she was standing in our front yard. Well, Nina now has written a book about her mother because her journey was not exactly the one that you would feel that you would wind up happily ever after. I don't want to tell, talk too much about the book. It's coming out in March. But Nina goes through her journey with her mother from childhood until the end when her mother was living in a shelter in New York. She went from a blue collar home into riches and then into rags. 
because of mental illness. Nina's story is so poignant and, and I really identify with her because when I wrote Behind the Magic Mirror, it was about my husband who suffered from schizophrenia and my life with him. And rewriting that over and, and bringing back to those memories that I tried to erase from my mind, it really is awful. I had nightmares. I was reliving that part of my life that was basically a nightmare. Nina started out on this journey three years ago to find everything she could about her mother, her life in the industry, her friendship with Grace. Carolyn was a bridesmaid in Grace's wedding. I would always read about them on page six when I lived in New York. That's the celebrity page in the, I believe, the New York Post. But I used to read about them, her all the time and all the things that they were doing. Grace was dating Ole Cassini. It was just a glamorous life. And in my eyes, she was not only my mentor, but she was my idol because she was a girl that was raised in this small industrial town on the Ohio River and she made it. And she gave me that dream of making it too. I spent some time with her. But later in life, when I remarried and came back to New York and resumed my acting career, or probably when I came to New York and started my acting career again after I got married, I would see Carolyn from time to time, one time in front of Bergdorf Goodman, and she had the most beautiful pink, leisure suit on, still beautiful and still wonderful. But in talking with her, I could tell that things were not right. She was living in the armory in a shelter for women. I knew that something had happened to her mentally. I went to see her one time in her apartment and it took her almost an hour to open up the door for me so that I could get in. But when I was with her, she was beautiful and kind. But I could tell when she was talking, sometimes it was from another sphere. But I really didn't know the whole story. After Nina grew up, I lost contact with her. And I really didn't know where she was. But just three years ago, she found me and reconnected. She came down here to Florida with her co-writer, Eve Claxton, and we had a wonderful time. And ever since then, we have been very, very close. And I love her. She's a good person. And I, because I have been through the same type of thing on, on a different level, of course, but I could identify her trying to release her pain, trying to find out just exactly what was wrong with her mother, and trying to piece together parts of Carolyn's life that Nina, as a child, really couldn't understand. I admire her tenacity in trying to write this book, and I admire her bravery in trying to find answers to mental illness and a mystery in her life. Some of it she could remember, others she had to piece together. Isn't it true that we never know our adventure? We don't know the beginning and the end. And I am so grateful for Nina writing this story. It's called The Bridesmaid's Daughter and it's coming out in March. You can pre-order it on Amazon. But it's a wonderful story about her mother and Grace Kelly, the relationship between a daughter and a mother, 
and the essential dissension of her mother into mental illness. Nina was standing in a grocery store and she looked down at one of the tabloids while she was in line and she saw a picture of her mother on the front cover of that tabloid sitting in a park and not the mother that she remembered. Her mother in Ohio, Carolyn's mother in Ohio, was humiliated because Carolyn was the crown jewel of Steubenville. She was the girl that made it. She was the girl that became famous. She was one of us. And the whole town looked up to her and lauded her, and all of a sudden, there she is, her true life, on the front pages of the magazine and on the television magazine shows. It was hard for Nina to see her family troubles out there on the front page for the world to see. I can't wait till this book comes out because there's so much about my cousin that I don't remember. But being able to know all of the things about my cousin that I never knew once she descended into mental illness, I really want to understand. And both Nina and I work very hard for the mental illness community. I give the proceeds to my books, to brain and behavior research. We hire researchers and we give scholarships to researchers to find out just what exactly causes depression, schizophrenia, and other brain disorders. And Nina also works very close with the mental illness community where she lives. This is a wonderful book. Nina is a hardworking, lovely, lovely girl. And being able to put together the pieces of her life and understand her mother has really been a challenge, painful, but yet consoling and given her resolution in her relationship with her mother. If any of my viewers out there are readers and they love autobiographies, I really suggest that you look at this book when it comes out or buy it or pre-order it because it is a story about royalty about a blue-collar girl who had found her best friend who eventually became royalty, their friendship, and then my cousin's eventual decline into a place where none of us could understand. It's hard to be a writer. It really is, especially when you write about things that are so personal. Life over 60 is a wonderful time of our lives. So please enjoy every single day of it. And I'm so glad you came to see me. I appreciate each and every one of you. And please enjoy your day and smell the roses. look for a sign and you say These are troubles of mine Where we thought to breaking up, coming under your skin. Don't know if we should stop or begin.